Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Easter weekend. We've had this, ooh, kind of road trip. The Kia EV9. It's a behemoth. Look at the size of it. If I stand over here, it just fits in shot. Now on TikTok, I'm seeing love hate. But I like it, I really do. That's the thing, the design ethos of Kia currently is just, it's out there. It's awesome though. They're doing, they're kind of merging some classic design language with some of the shaping and uh, then some of the futuristic lighting systems, big chunky bumpers. And if there's a vehicle that suited the new logo, it's this. So this retails for around £73,000. Now I think you've got, I think it boasts around 315 mile range and it's a seven seater and a proper seven seater at that. I can't, I mean, length is, it's gotta be longer than most of the pickups we've had. And the design language, especially at this front, I think it's about here. You know, keyless entry just kicks in there with the door handles that pop out, which is nice. But that looks Range Rover-y to me. Tires, look at the size of them. What are they, 20, 21s? And wheels designed for EVs. Yes, it's gonna be a heavy old beast. Would you reckon three ton possibly? And it's got a 100 kilowatt hour battery. And it is well equipped. Now these start at around 65,000 for an air. This is a GT line. You can also get GT line S. No GT as yet, but knowing Kia, it's not beyond the realms, is it? Whoa, check my hair out. So tomorrow we embark on a road trip all the way up to St. Bees. And I'm intrigued to see what the economy is like, especially considering its size. Yep, memory everything. Just look at it, what beast. Nice to see light interior too. Dark sporty roof, but I like that. This reminds me of Dorothy with all your settings here. Heated steering wheel and, oh look, I think that's an ergo motion seat. Yeah, yeah. Are they covers? I've not actually looked at them yet. Yeah, no, that is a cover. Thing is, we know why that's there. That's for the aerodynamics. You've got to make an electric vehicle as efficient as possible. I don't think there's many out there that have proper alloys anymore. I wonder what the wheels look like under it. And no, I'm not going to start stripping it off. <laughs> so we've got this till Tuesday. Is there anything you want me to include in the road trip? And we'll also do a review as well. Now we got to see this. Yeah, well, exactly, Richard. That was the aim to kind of head that direction. You're the one that gave us the inspiration for it. I think it's last time Annabelle and I went to St. B's, we bought a plate set. And I think it's when Annabelle used to do mystery shops for McDonald's. So that's going back a while. <laughs> Likelihood is we're either in the Zara Picasso or the Mark II Golf GTI. So to do it in something like this, yeah. Now the one thing you do notice around the roads is how big it is. I've had to literally force a couple of cars backwards because they just look at it and go, oh, you can fit in that gap. And I'm like, no, I really can't. And when they get alongside, they realize you can't. I've already taken the lawnmower, which is our Honda Rizzi, to the garage. And the fact that you can get the mower like there and still have proper five seats. Yeah, it's about three miles to the front, but everything's just well equipped. 
thing is, I can also charge my bike and things like that. I don't want to give everything away, but I thought you guys would want to see it. So this retails for around 73,000. Well, no, because if you think about it, Aura have got a similar type of color scheme in their interiors. I think this is just the direction. If you've noticed over the last few years, a lot of people are going, I don't like dark and drab interiors. Yeah, this was the launch color. That's what you said last time, wasn't it, Jamie? Thing is, I really do like its looks. Because that's the one thing that's been commented on. Oh, look at it. It doesn't look like an SUV should be. The other thing is, how can you pay 70 grand for a Kia? I was like, look at it. EVs, you know, are priced higher anyway. That, that just comes with the territory nowadays. But the fact that you can get six seaters and seven seaters, and it's this big, you can take your family pretty much anywhere. The other thing is, when I was reading, if you go for the air, it's around a 350 mile range. But if you take it into the city, that increases to 450. 450. 800 volk architecture as well. So full charge, I think, was around 24 minutes. That's ridiculous. That's the thing, we are seeing EVs evolving massively. This is where you charge it. Just press this and ta-da. So we had it on charge the other day. I think it had 132 miles of range and to top it up was six and a half hours. And that's at 7.1 kilowatt. So you can get a decent charge overnight. And if you get a tariff like ours, which I can't remember what it is, is it three or four pence per kilowatt hour? Because that's the only thing that will let this down. You, you plug this into a Tesla charger and you're talking... <laughs> no, it doesn't. I'll go into that in a second. Yeah, if you charge this on a Tesla supercharger, you're talking, what, one pound kilowatt hour? So it's a 100 kilowatt battery. That's 100 quid for a proper full charge. I think this cost us 14 quid to put about 150 miles on it. So yeah, like I've always said... They have their applications. If you've got a Type 2 charger, it makes perfect sense. But if you're going to be permanently using it on, say, the infrastructure that's on main roads, well, yeah, it will get expensive. But bear in mind, a lot of manufacturers do have partnerships with people like Octopus. So you get so many miles at whatever rate. It handles exceptionally well. I mean, yes, it will dip a bit, but because of its weight... I mean, it pulls 0 to 60 in. They claim 5.3. I think it's closer to sub 5. Thank you for the thumbs ups, by the way, and the shares. So, yeah, I was surprised. The other thing is it doesn't feel the size it looks. Even when Annabelle was driving it, she was like, well, it feels more like a smaller SUV. Whereas, in all honesty, it's got to be closer to Range Rover size. Breeze block and wheels. <laughs> I've just found some breeze blocks in the garden. And it's definitely not the weight of a breeze block. It's, uh, yeah, a fair bit weightier. But because of that, it handles like it's on rails. So this is all-wheel drive. So it's got dual motors, and it's around 400 brake horsepower. The air's rear-wheel drive. The colour is beautiful, isn't it, Richard? Yeah, I know it's not going to be your cup of tea, but... I know you'll enjoy the road trip. I uh, hope you've been watching the AT35 off-roading as well. We drive that for a river. And we went off with Damien from the Woodlife, and that was fun. Let's have a look at the cluster. Okay. So, column shift. And there's your EV button. La, 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 la. Copyright, 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 copyright. There we go. That's the one thing that does get me. When you get in, the music starts blaring. It reminds me of BMW i3 with this area being... A what? No! It's not listening. 
and you can slide things like this. And just push this in. Come in. Because <laughs> I've only got one hand, things are challenging. And we go, come on. And there it is. Oh, maybe it doesn't slide. Now I'm talking rubbish, it's not sliding at all. Wireless charger. And on this model and GT Line S, you get things like driving modes. I mean, terrain mode. So it's like off-roady type thing. So with a full charge, we're looking at 280 miles. 248 miles even. I'm gonna shut the door, that beeps. There we go. So now the steering wheel's sorting itself out. Put the foot on the brake, we'll see the cluster. Please do not burst into life. No, please be quiet. Thank you. No, it's a nice open design. And just look at the room. And they do recline and slide. And on the GT Line S, I don't quite know how they do it, but you've got a revolving system in the back for the seats. I have to take a closer look at that when I get a chance. Now, I'm really looking forward to the road trip. The other thing is we're coming back a beautiful way past Buttermere. So, yeah. The likelihood is we'll be setting off around 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. And then I'll, I'll film some, well, I'll take some pictures and upload them to the community so you can see what's going on. Yes, yeah, a lot of lack of button, uh, well, rotaries. I don't, there's one rotary for the volume, so that's good. And that's on off switch as well. But you've got proper buttons, but yes, you are gonna have to do a fair few bits through the screen. But say, compared to a Tesla, there's a lot more functionality than you'd expect. I mean, these are actual proper buttons rather than just pushing this. I mean, yeah, this is different. Thing is, this is nice and responsive. I wanna make sure I don't turn the damn radio on again. So I'm not really familiar with this yet. So there's the home screen. I presume, there we go. Car wash mode, seats. Second row seat, whoa, heat and ventilation. Can I? I can control the folding of the seats from here. Ooh, I do like that. <laughs> right, anyway. Yeah. You've had your first look at it. I'll add loads and loads of information in the road trip and obviously the review as well. Right, I won't keep you any longer because it is Sunday and it's like a family day, isn't it? So, thank you for joining me and I'll be back soon. Enjoy the rest of your Easter holiday. I've left it on, so it doesn't look like that. Thank you, Neil. I will. You too. So have a great day, and thanks. Bye-bye.